Hey guys and welcome back to another educational ferret video here on the channel do not forget to subscribe and follow for more ferret content and just a reminder that my halloween ferret costume contest with sam from my funky ferrets does end on sunday which is halloween so get those submissions in before it's too late today we are going to be talking about a very important subject and one that is not really talked about that much in the ferret community and seems to kind of happen quietly on the sidelines. I wanted to kind of put a warning out there to all the ferret parents out there and also cat owners as well. This is something that happens with cats too and that is the issue of bladder stones. And I actually have an entire dedicated article on the subject that I just posted so as you're watching this video you can follow along with that if you prefer written material. It also includes all of my sources, the published studies, and research done on the topic as well. A lot of vets say that it is a fairly uncommon condition in ferrets, however me personally, as a ferret parent, I do get a lot of emails from other concerned ferret parents who are experiencing this problem with their ferrets. And I have a quote here from a study that kind of explains why. It says, ferrets appear to be more sensitive to some of the predisposing factors that increase the levels of magnesium and phosphates in urine, depending on the type of diet, thus developing alkaline urinary pH, as in urinary tract infections. And it's kind of difficult to say whether or not bladder stones are increasing in occurrence as we, the years go on, or ferret parents are just doing a better job noticing these things and taking their ferrets to the vet, that way a report can be made. But regardless, this condition can be very debilitating, very, very painful and uncomfortable for your ferret. So it is very important to learn the signs and learn how to prevent bladder stones from developing in the first place. So what exactly are bladder stones? So bladder stones are stony formations of crystals and minerals that can cause disruptions and problems in the bladder and each type of bladder stone is named depending on the predominant mineral that is present in the bladder so the most common ones that we see in ferrets are struvite cysteine calcium oxalate and calcium phosphate the most reported stone in ferrets is struvite cross-checking the information and looked at a different a couple different studies and there are some that say struvite is no longer the most common one and it's actually the cysteine and then I have others that say that struvite is still the most common one. But anyway, the struvite bladder stones are what is mostly caused by diet. There are some cases where they can be caused by kidney disease or infections like UTIs, but those are a lot less common. In a study done using 408 ferrets with bladder stones, it was found that 67% were struvite, 15% were cysteine, 11% were calcium oxalate, and the remaining 8% were various minerals of low individual numbers. And it was also concluded in various studies that male ferrets seem to be more commonly affected with bladder stones versus female. But as we know, in a lot of cases for humans, females are generally more likely to develop UTIs. I have another quote here from a study that says, an association between ferret bladder stones and diets containing poor quality meat protein or too high a proportion of cereal protein has been made. And we do know that many ferret marketed kibbles, so kibbles that were created for ferrets, typically have a lot of cereal grains, vegetables, inappropriate fillers, dyes, carbohydrates. So it doesn't exactly set them up for success in this department. We also know that an imbalance of urinary pH can contribute to the formation of bladder stones. The average pH of ferret urine is about 6.5 to 7.5, but it has been noted to be closer to six when being fed a raw meat-based diet. It has been noted also that struvite crystals often form at a urine pH higher than 6.6. .6. Experts are saying that it is possible the occurrence of cysteine bladder stones, possibly from genetic factors, we might be seeing more of over the years, and that is due to the fact that ferrets are becoming more and more inbred and poorly bred by the animal mills in other countries where this is not super common to do. This particular bladder stone is not seen that often. That's just kind of a connection that they have made. A couple signs of bladder stones. I'm not gonna go too in depth on like treatment and recovery. This is all information that you can find online as well as with your exotic veterinarian. But if you do suspect that your ferret has bladder 
other stones. They may present signs such as weight loss, difficulty to urinate, that's a pretty common one, um, appetite loss, abdominal pain, lethargy, urine dribbling on themselves, frequent licking of groin, blood in urine, maybe they're peeing in places that they don't normally pee, they're missing the pee pad, they keep trying to go but nothing's coming out. So if you suspect or you notice any of these things with your ferrets, it is absolutely paramount that you get to an exotic veterinarian immediately because waiting can be fatal, especially if the ferret is completely blocked up and they can't pass anything through their system. And in a lot of cases for ferrets in particular, just because their bodies are so small and it's a lot harder for them to pass stones, just on their own and medically, a lot of the times they do require surgery. So another big reason why we should try to prevent them as best we can. So let's talk a little bit about preventing bladder stones just in general, nothing super specific. So the absolute first thing that your veterinarians are going to tell you is to prevent dehydration as best you can. And this sounds simple, just make sure your ferret is drinking water, but it's actually quite difficult with ferrets. Many domestic ferrets are chronically dehydrated by default. And this is due to the fact they are fed often very dry diets. They are given rodent water bottles as their main source of water. Ferrets are built to receive most of their water intake through their prey. Prey is about 80 to 85% water. Kibble, which is what the vast majority of ferret owners feed, is roughly five to 10% water, and it's not even comparable to prey. So if you do feed any type of dry food, I highly, highly recommend you are adding water to every single meal. Yes, this means you're gonna have to be replacing the food more frequently, but it is so worth preventing this absolutely awful thing for your ferret to go through. Also avoid relying solely on rodent water bottles as a source of water for them. It's not species appropriate. It becomes more of a game for them to get the water out. Number two on the list is going to be feed a quality diet, of course. Um, the food that you feed your ferret should always be high in quality animal proteins and fats. Avoid foods that contain any unnecessary carbohydrates, fillers, colorings, all the stuff that your ferret doesn't need. And by doing so, this will make the urine more acidic which is a less of a favorable environment for these stony formations, the bladder stones, to develop. Number three, use pee pads on occasion, especially if you're suspecting something's wrong. And this is because when you're using litter boxes, you can't tell the color, consistency, the frequency that your ferret's going to the bathroom. But when you do pee pads, you can actually see all of those things, which I find super, super helpful. And then number four, of course, always check with your veterinarian. Catching urinary issues quickly is very, very important to ensuring a successful prognosis. A fairly recent discovery made by both experts and ferret parents is that certain ingredients or just plant ingredients in general in domestic ferret diets could be contributing to the formation of bladder stones. And please note, there is no official study or research done on a specific brand of food that we are able to point a finger at and say, yep, that causes bladder stones. I don't wanna get in trouble. <laughs> so everything here is anecdotal. However, it is still very important to consider. Um, I did a poll on my Instagram because I do know a lot of my followers have experienced this, like I mentioned before. So I wanted to see what were you feeding when this happened with your ferrets. And the vast majority of people who submitted said, origin cat and kitten. Other portions said instinct ultimate protein. And then I had a couple say Zupreme and totally ferret, I believe. So I then dove deep into these brands to see if there were any similarities between the products. I do know personally, I have heard countless times of origin in particular, ferrets were fed this food when they developed stones. We think about what causes stones specifically. For example, calcium oxalate stones. Create an environment that is more favorable for this to grow, you would be feeding a diet that has a decent amount of calcium oxalate. And some examples of high oxalate foods are leafy greens, legumes, cranberries, and nuts. And the newer origin formula for the cat original, which is what a lot of people choose to feed their ferrets, does consist of whole red lentils, whole pinto beans, whole peas, whole green lentils, whole chickpeas, whole navy beans, lentil fiber, pea starch, whole cranberry, and collard greens. So a lot of these ingredients 
do contain quite a bit of oxalate. And don't forget, they are not species appropriate for ferrets to consume. And it is also noted by researchers for human health, the amount of oxalate that appears in the urine is determined not only by dietary intake of oxalate, but also by intestinal microbial degradation, which suggests that ferrets experiencing loss of that beneficial intestinal bacteria could be at a higher risk of developing this type of stone and likely other types as well. And you might be saying, well, that's a human study. Ferrets are different from humans. Actually, ferrets are quite similar health-wise to humans, which is why we use them for many studies for human health. How does a ferret's intestinal beneficial bacteria get affected? A couple different ways, one of which being after a round of antibiotics that kills everything in the system. And for such a little ferret being on very strong antibiotics that are typically prescribed to them when they have infections and whatever, that wreaks havoc in their body and it takes a very long time for them to get that beneficial bacteria back. It can also occur during times of stress, moving homes, and feeding diets containing inappropriate ingredients for their species. In the case of instinct ultimate protein that doesn't include any of those legumes, thruvite stones, as we mentioned, mainly form during times of dehydration and when the urinary pH is off. Tapioca was recently, I think recently, made the second ingredient in the food, meaning it makes up a decent amount of that food. Sugar ingredients will naturally make the urine less acidic, which increases the risk of struvite stone development, especially when fed for every meal for extended periods of time, which is usually what ferret owners do. They feed the exact same food for every meal for the entire life of that ferret. And not only that, we just mentioned calcium oxalate stones likely form when the intestinal microbiome is compromised, and that happens when you feed sugar ingredients such as tapioca. You're reaching the end of this video, and I hope that you have learned a little bit more about ladder stones and ferrets, how to prevent them, and if you would like to learn more about the diet that I recommend, dry foods even that I recommend. I have all of those videos on my channel. I also have the written version of this article that you can find on my website that includes all the studies, all the research. When choosing a diet for ferrets, you should make sure that it is biologically appropriate, something that they can efficiently utilize, digest, and absorb. Going against their biological makeup, especially for every meal for their entire life, will inevitably cause serious consequences down the line. So we really need to be careful what we are feeding our ferrets. We need to be more conscious, just like we are for ourselves and our children. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you to all of our channel members that help make the channel run. If you like this video, maybe consider becoming a member or subscribing, leaving a comment. I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.